Mr. Christian Murthy. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to both of you for appearing today and for your public service. First question is, uh, there have been no collisions between any U.S. assets and one of these UAPs, correct? We have not had a collision. We've had at least 11 near misses, though. And uh, maybe we'll talk about those 11 near misses or any place where there's close proximity. Um, I assume, or tell me if I'm wrong, there's been no uh, attempt, there's no communications uh, or any kind of uh, communication signals that emanate from those objects uh, that we've detected, correct? That, that's correct. And have we attempted to communicate with those objects? Uh, no. So we don't, we don't even put out a s alert saying, you know, uh, U.S., um, identi you know, identify yourself. Uh, you are, you know, within our flight path or something like that. We, we haven't said anything like that? We've not put anything out like that. Generally speaking, uh, what, uh, you know, for example, in the video that we showed earlier, uh, it appears to be something that is, uh, you know, unmanned, uh, appears to be something that... Uh, may or may not be in controlled flight, uh, and so we've not attempted any communication uh, with that. Okay, so, um, and I, I assume we've never discharged any armaments against a UAP, correct? That's correct. Um, how about wreckage? Ha have we come across any wreckage of any kind of um, object that has now been examined by you? The UAP task force doesn't have any wreckage that isn't uh, explainable, that, that isn't consistent with being of terrestrial origin. Do we have any sensors underwater uh, to um, detect on submerged UAPs, uh, anything that is in the ocean or in the seas? So I think uh, that would be more appropriately addressed in closed session, sir. Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest questions that uh, that, that I have is, um, you, we say with a lot of probability, we say they, quote unquote, probably do represent physical objects, close quote. Um, when we say probably, is that because we cannot conclusively say that they are physical objects? In the task force uh, uh, report, uh, when, when I say probably uh, represent physical objects, uh, most of them represent physical objects. There could be some that are more of a uh, uh, of a uh, meteorological phenomena, something like that, that may not uh, be a physical object in the uh, in the sense that most people think of something you could go up and touch. But the ones where you say most of them uh, represent physical objects, can you say that they are definitely, like with 100% certainty, that they are physical objects? I can say with certainty that uh, a number of these are physical objects. Okay, so there, we can't rule out that some of them may not be physical objects. So, some uh, certainly could be a sensor anomaly uh, or something like that. Some could be. Now, how about uh, with regard to UAPs? We've talked about UAPs on training areas, uh, but obviously um, there's some sensor bias. I would think we, we put sensors in training areas. Um, how about with regard to non-training areas? Do we track what's in open source? Um, and what civilians and others have tracked, and have we found similarities to uh, what they've observed in terms of UAPs in non-training areas to the ones that are in training areas? Uh, the UAP task force has uh, worked very hard to, to make sure the data set that we're working with is a, uh, is a data set that we have very good uh, control over that data. Uh, so we have some partnerships with FAA so that we get some of that, so we get that reporting in. Um, but if it comes to just, you know, open source reports or someone says that they saw something, that generally does not make it into our database. So we, basically it sounds like we have a good partnership with FAA, um, but apart from FAA, we don't have partnerships with other agencies or other entities that might be tracking so that we could enlarge our data set to make comparisons. But we will. So that's the goal of this next effort will be to uh, expand that relationship with the, uh, the, the rest of government and the interagency so we can understand what they're seeing, what we're seeing. We can correlate on uh, each other's holdings because and hopefully I think, resolve this. Sorry to interrupt, but I, I think that we're, we might have a bias right now going on with regard to just reporting on UAPs being in training areas when we don't 
really track what's happening elsewhere. Last question, have our encounters with UAPs altered the development of our, either our offense or offensive or defensive capabilities or even our sensor capabilities? We'd take that for the closed session. Okay, great, thank you.